Well, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. And to our guests, thank you for being here with us and for being part of our celebration this morning and for honoring us by being here and, and worshiping with us this morning. We have this, uh, this ongoing thing uh, with the church that I have where on communion Sundays, I do not preach a sermon because we just don't have the time. So the church has, decided, has suggested that on Sunday morning when we have communion, we just do communion. However, I end up speaking for 10 or 15 minutes, so it's, you know, same old thing anyway. But uh, I want to talk a little bit this morning about, just for a moment, about what we just read. Let's set the scene for a second. We talked last month, we're, we're going through the book of Acts every communion Sunday this year to, to get through uh, and, and to show how parts of Acts we can see what Holy Communion is all about through that. And last time, last month, I'm, I'm not going to ask you who remembers from last month because you probably don't remember, but we were talking about the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came and Peter got up to talk to the people afterward. They were like, at this point, you know? I mean, they're all, they come from different countries and speak different languages. And they're all there gathered together and all of a sudden these disciples start talking in all their own languages. So that everybody there, no matter what language they speak, hears the message of God. You can imagine it just totally freaked them out. You can imagine it must have. And so they're probably wondering what's going on. And God is so cool. You know, he, he does things in such a cool way. He brings the tongues of fire come down on the disciples. And they speak in these, in these different languages. And the people are going, you know, wow, this is something. And then Peter stands up and says, let me tell you what just happened. And that's what we got into last week. Or last month, rather. And so today we go into a little bit more of what Peter had to say that day. And the thing that I wanted to, to, us to think about this morning was when he said in verse 32, God has raised this Jesus to life and we are all witnesses of that fact. He raised Jesus to life. What do you think Peter meant when he said we are all witnesses to that fact? Very clearly what he meant then was... The people, a lot of them had seen Jesus. A lot of them had met him. A lot of them had, had actually probably seen Jesus uh, performing miracles. And if they hadn't seen him, they certainly had heard about it. And so they were witnesses. They knew for a fact that Jesus had been raised from the dead. And the people who saw him directly were telling everybody and there was enough of them to where it, really got, it was really well known. Jesus was raised from the dead. And so what does he say? He raises Jesus to life and we are all witnesses of that fact. I'd like to suggest to you today that we weren't there 2,000 years ago, obviously. We weren't eyeball witnesses to that fact. But you and I today, 2,000 years later, are witnesses to that fact. How? How? How do you think we can say that we're witnesses to that fact? What do you think? How can we say that? Nobody has a clue. All right. Because we're his disciples. We see him every day in our lives. Don't you experience him? Don't you see him? Don't you know him? Don't you love him? Don't you feel his love? Aren't we convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt because we see him and we experience him that he in fact is risen from the dead? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take a little quick commercial break. You pro I don't know if you received one of these or not. I know they're in 11 o'clock bulletin and I didn't get a chance to check it. But it's a flyer and there's a... a on our Wednesday night programs, on the 17th of this month, we're going to start a new one. Tom Schaefer's going to be teaching it. And the title is, What If What Happened Then Changes Everything Now? And I'd like to ask you that question this morning to think about. What if what happened back then changes everything now? Do you really know him that well? Do you really experience him? Are you truly his witness in this community and in the world? Someone sent me an email this week, and I usually don't forward this stuff for anything. It might have even been Anne. I can't remember. Sent me this thing about uh, this church was across the street from a bar. And the bar was getting ready to triple the size of the bar. And they're going to do all this advertising and all these neon signs. And the people in church started praying. 
They didn't want it. They didn't want this bar to grow and to, to expand. And so the people in the church were praying about it and praying about it. And they finished this multi-million dollar renovation. And the night before it was supposed to open, it burned to the ground. And the pastor and, and the people were going, whoa, <laughs> you know. And the people, you know, the, pa the, the, the owner of the bar blamed the people at the church. And they said, hey, we didn't do anything, you know, we didn't have anything to do with this. None of our people went over and burned your place down. We don't know anything about it. So the, so the civil suit went into court. And the bar owner was saying, these people, it's their fault that it burned down. And the people in the church were saying, no, we had nothing to do with it. And the judge said, you know what it sounds like to me? Sounds like to me that you have a bar owner that believes in the power of prayer in a church that doesn't. Think about that for a minute, yeah. Where are we in this season of Lent? Where are we? What happened 2,000 years ago was awesome and it was powerful. Does that make any difference in your life every day? If it doesn't, then we need to be praying and asking God to come closer and to forgive us of our sin and, 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 and to draw us closer to him. Because what happened 2,000 years ago, folks, and I think I can speak for you all here, what happened 2,000 years ago has everything to do with everything that happens in my life today. Okay, amen. Good to hear that. Yeah. So when we come to celebrate Holy Communion, what does that mean for us? It means that not only are we witnesses to the fact, not the theology, not, not the theory, story, not but we are witnesses to the fact that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, victorious over sin and death, and he did it not because he wanted to put on a show, but he did it because he wanted to defeat sin and death once and for all. What, in Jesus' life? Jesus wasn't sinful. He had no sin. So why did he do it? For you and for me. I know I've told you many times. It just makes my socks roll up and down when I think. When I think about what Jesus Christ did for me. How I was a sinner. I'm not worthy. The stuff I've done in my... You don't have a clue. <laughs> stuff I've done in my life. And I don't have a clue a lot of stuff you've done either. So that's alright. But you know something? We've all done stuff like that. We're not worthy to be called God's child. But God sent his son Jesus, like I said before, not to put on a show. He sent his son Jesus because he said, I love my people so much. It grieves me that they are sinning and they're pulling away from me and they don't know me and, and, and they're perverting the message uh, that, I, that I've given. Gosh, it sounds like today, doesn't it? But he said, I want my people to know what it means to be loved. And so I'll send my son to pay that price so that they won't have to be lost in sin for their lives. So that they can invite me in, they can accept me, and oh, they can give me the opportunity to forgive them. And to heal them. And to draw them close to me. So that yes, we can live in the kingdom right now. I'm working with a, a ministerial candidate who um, I, I've been appointed as his mentor and we're getting him through the candidacy process into ministry and one of the papers that he has to write is explain the kingdom of God and he doesn't have a United Methodist background and, and we were talking this week and I said to him what do you think that is you know what are you writing he says well when we get to heaven I said yeah what else and, and he really was kind of confused about that as most people are. We have, I'm going to get into some theology here this morning. We have a twofold kingdom of God. And the reason, I'm telling you this for a reason, okay? This is not a seminary class this morning. I'm, I'm telling you this for a reason. We have, we're going to enter into the kingdom of God when we arrive in heaven and we're with him forever, right? Okay, we all know that. But what about the kingdom of God that's here on this earth? And you say, where is it? It's here and here and here. That's where the kingdom of God lives. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died and rose again. That's why he went back to heaven and said, oh, I'm sending somebody to you who's really going to blow you away. And he sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's been with us every day. That's why, because we can live in God's kingdom. What does it mean to live in the kingdom? To live in his presence. Well, duh. He's here with us every day. 